Ramana Maharshi's words are deep and direct. My comments are intended to bring his deep words into your experience. Use YouTube's closed captions to read along. And this week, I will introduce you to the Ramana Maharshi text, Essence of Instruction, or Upadesa Saram in Sanskrit, and Upadesha Unidar in Tamil. Now, here I want to show you uh, a photograph of uh, the great Tamil poet Muruganar. He came to Ramana Maharshi in 1923 and immediately became his follower, saying that Ramana was the guru that he had been seeking. All the pictures of him are like this one, in which I see this deep kind of intensity that he has. And he became Ramana's most uh, devoted follower and stayed with Ramana until Ramana's Mahasamadhi in 1950. During this time, he wrote thousands of poems to Ramana. He also collected bits of Ramana's dialogues over the 27 years they were together, confirmed each of them with Ramana, and put them into the book Guru Vachaka Kolai that has more than 1,200 of these sayings, and it's the most extensive collection of Ramana's wisdom. Okay. Now, this is the kind of background to this book. Maruganar, in 1927, was composing a poem based on an ancient legend about a group of ascetics who were performing various rites and rituals in the Daruka forest. These ascetics believe that karma, the path of action, is God. They believe that by performing ritual austerities through their own will and action, they could attain cities, powers, and happiness. They arrogantly believe that their efforts in performing karma rituals were bound to yield fruit and that even gods could not prevent it. Lord Shiva then appeared in the Daruka forest to deflate the pride of these ascetics and to offer them the right instruction so they could all be liberated. When Maruganar got to this part of the poem he wanted to write, he felt unable to express the words of Shiva. And since Ramana Maharshi was self-realized, Maruganar thought that he was not different from Shiva. So who better to pen Shiva's instruction than Sri Ramana? He asked Ramana, who accepted, and wrote out the 30 verses in one setting, discussing them with Maruganar as he composed the verses. These verses show the progression of spiritual practice through the four stages or paths, the four margas, to self-realization. These four stages have long been defined in Vedic culture as karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and jnana yoga. These are the paths of action, love, mental discipline, and experiential knowledge, as distinguished from cognitive understanding. Even though self-realization 
or atmayana is attained only through the highest path of self-inquiry, Lord Shiva knew that this was beyond the scope of these ascetics due to their current spiritual immaturity and the gross state of their minds. Such minds need to be refined and made pure so they can dive deeper and understand true inquiry. They had to be made ready. So the first three paths were given so they could prepare and purify their minds, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, and raja yoga. This shows that Ramana's approach was broad and encompassing. He did not advocate the path of self-inquiry alone, though he strongly recommended it. He welcomed and guided every kind of seeker, irrespective of whether he was a beginner or advanced, whether yogi, bhakta, or yani. Though his main emphasis was always the path of self-inquiry, he knew that self-inquiry required maturity of understanding. That's why he prescribed the three margas, these other three paths, as preparation when needed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this Ramana Maharshi video, subscribe, like, and send me a comment.